Hey guys, so we are answering your questions today. Today is, we're gonna be answering from Mandy, and the question is, how often should you go in for a general adjustment? Now that's a good question, but if we're answering specifically to SCP, we're a little different here. We don't just adjust our patients. If you've ever come in, you know that we spent time with you, we do muscle work, we use cupping, but if you just want to come in for what we call maintenance care, I recommend twice a month, but you can look at it like the benefits of exercise. The more you go, the better you get. And then if, especially if you come here, we're going to spend more time with you and again, just do more than adjustments. So right now I'm going to show you an adjustment. Okay, so this is Josie. We're just going to do what we call a side posture adjustment. Again, here at SCP, before you get to this point, we would have done a lot more work on you on this table. So Josie, face me on your side. Traditional adjustment. She is a very good assistant. Right there. <laughs> Both sides. There. And, and that is how we adjust the low back and hips at SCP. Hey guys, Lucas here. I'm answering another question just like Dr. Joseph did before. Uh, one of our questions came in from Go Tiff Fit about overhead mobility in athletes and if we get some extension, I'm assuming she was meaning lumbar extension in that overhead position. Um, so we're gonna go through and just kind of talk real briefly about it and then I'll show you a mobility exercise, an activation exercise and kind of the difference between both um, and how it works. All right, so we have Ashley here who was notoriously poor in overhead <laughs> uh, movements with her arms and stuff. Um, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna have her put the foam roller against the wall. It's gonna be about shoulder height here and you're just gonna put your wrists on it. Um, and the important thing with this is to try to fight extension. So I'm gonna have her break, brace her core here, make sure her spine is in a line. So you'll see her neck stay straight, her thoracic spine stays straight, and her lumbar spine stays straight. She's gonna gently roll the foam roller up. Good. And the, the better she gets at this, she can take a step forwards into the wall until we can get pretty much straight overhead. And she's doing a good job of maintaining this position. We want to make sure we don't fall into that anterior pelvic tilt and fall over with the, the lumbar spine there. Uh, the next one we're going to do is an activation exercise. This gets all of the posterior shoulder girdle and that cervical thoracic joint, all the muscles that go through there, all your traps, all that other stuff. Uh, stability wise, one of the limiting factors with overhead stability in the shoulder or overhead mobility in the shoulder is cervical thoracic stability. So we're going to go through, it's a high pull row. So I'm gonna have Ashley stand here. We're gonna get some tension into the band with our arms, take a step back, and we're gonna do a high pull to about chin level, maintaining that core brace. And the same thing we were doing on the uh, mobility with the foam roller. This one's harder. Good, so make sure we're pulling high. Those elbows have to stay up and we're pulling to our chin, thumbs to our chin, just about, there we go, much better. Good. Okay, welcome back to another episode of Ask Us Anything. Today's answer uh, question is from Carlos, and he asked about snapping hip syndrome. So we're gonna show you what snapping hip syndrome is. Here's your body without the skin. Okay, so this is right here called your TFL. Starts at the top of the hip, and it forms into what's called the IT band or iliotibial band. Generally, snapping hip syndrome is when this is too tight and it's rubbing over the bone. So watch, come here real quick. I'm gonna show you. You get rid of all the muscle and it's rubbing over that bone. It is the outermost point right on the, at the edge of the hip. So we're gonna show you a stretch that you can do to help alleviate that issue. Okay, so here is the, what we can call the couch stretch or hip flexor stretch with the rear foot elevated. Basically, you're gonna stretch your quad and your TFL all at the same time. The size of the box will depend on how tight your hips are. Uh, you can go pretty low or you can go pretty high, just whatever's comfortable. Don't overstretch and also don't understretch. So we're gonna go knee down. This is just for support so you don't fall over. You can also use a table, chair, anything. You just stand up super tall. Hips forward, don't lean forward. Don't arch your back, just stay tall, stomach tight and lean forward. That will help loosen up that muscle, help with the snapping hip syndrome. All right, guys, Lucas here, um, fielding questions for our question and answer segment. Um, fielding a question from Emma, talking about ankle mobility and calf strengthening after bunion surgery. 
Um, so one of the big things that we want to focus on here is the splaying of the toes in the foot to make sure that we're nice and stable while walking, doing other things. Um, that's what's really going to lead into our mobility in the ankle. It's not necessarily so much the ability to move it around, but the structures around it to be nice and solid so it can move around safely. Um, so one of the things that we want to start with is being barefoot is really important for some of our lifts or any of our like little technical exercises like this. And what I really want us to start on would just be balance, one. So just being able to lift our foot and not sway back and forth. We're not falling all over the place. We're not buckling at the knees. And once we get to that point, we can go into a four-way toe tap and then back behind us. Once we get pretty good at that, we can start really sitting into it. And if that's really, really easy for us, we can find an Eric's pad or a pillow. Um, you can fold up some laundry, fold up a towel, whatever you need to do, and more or less the same thing. Once we catch our balance here with two feet, going on to one foot, going into our excursions, our movements. And that should move you along. So we have a question from Jason about if chiropractic care can help with strength and, and power and stuff like that. The easy answer is no. The better answer is uh, a good plan and things that we can do from our training and things like that is identifying discrepancies or something that's really limiting you in some of your lifts that would add that extra couple or extra weight or that better um, technique, whatever it might be. So getting adjusted, making sure that we're um, dealing with muscle discrepancies or imbalances um, and just mobility and things like that, something that we offer and something that we do here frequently with all of our, all of our visits. And then of course, getting regularly adjusted keeps you well moved, well moving.